Aaron Donald has retired. This is supposed to be surprising, but really for the last several years, especially after the Rams won the Super Bowl in 2021, Donald has hinted at retirement, so it's surprising, but not really. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to try and guess in real time, is Aaron Donald the GOAT? Is he the best defensive player, or more specifically, is he the best pass rusher of all time? And normally when you get into this discussion of best pass rusher, rushers of all time, there are a couple names that immediately shoot up, particularly three, Lawrence Taylor, Reggie White, and Bruce Smith. I am also going to throw in Deacon Jones, who was the original dominant pass rusher and led the league in sacks five times. In honor of Aaron Donald's career, I'm going to rank Donald to those other four players, and this is just my opinion, because there's really no one way to accurately judge. Do you go by peak? Do you go by play-by-play? -play? Do you have longevity? Is it longevity in peak, it's kind of complicated. Oh yeah, then you got guys like J.J. Watt who were on track to be in this conversation, at least he was through his first five seasons, when he won three Defensive Player of the Year awards before injuries hit. But I don't know, I'm just rambling. Anyway, let's begin. Number five, Deacon Jones. Now this sounds kind of like I'm throwing him in as a pity selection to appease old timers, but I don't appease old timers on my channel. Deacon Jones finished his career with 170 73 and a half sacks and led the league in sacks five different times. He was named Defensive Player of the Year twice, five-time First Team All-Pro, three-time Second Team All-Pro, made eight Pro Bowls, was famous for his hand slap where he would literally bitch slap his opponent in the face and stun them in order to get by. And of course, the NFL had to outlaw this because people were just getting like concussions and stuff, which isn't funny, okay? But to lead the league from 64 to 1960, you could argue it's the best six-year stretch any defensive lineman's ever had, leading the league in sacks five times, and the one year he didn't lead the league in sacks, he had 16 of them. Where Jones gets hurt is his competition wasn't as great, and a lot of his success is kind of concentrated within those six seasons, so he didn't have the greatest longevity. But then again, if you don't really value longevity over peak, then Deacon Jones might be a little bit higher for you. Either way, he was a nasty motherfucker, and he would have certainly translated to any era. I can't believe he was a 14th round pick. When people say Tom Brady's the greatest draft steal of all time, I'm not so sure about that. Number four, Bruce Smith. Smith is officially the NFL's all-time sack leader with 200. Now, some people might discredit him because they say, well, he played 19 seasons. Well, I say, guess what? 19 seasons and 200 sacks. That's still a double-digit sack average over basically two decades. And Smith played in a division with Dan Marino, who was notorious for or getting rid of the ball faster than anybody else that's ever played. So he might have another 20 or so sacks if the Dolphins didn't employ the greatest sack avoiding quarterback ever. He's also known to be pretty good against the run as well. Overall, he had 13 double digit sack seasons, including a career high 19 in 1990 when he won his first of two Defensive Player of the Year awards. So he wasn't just a longevity merchant, he also had a great peak, although that is kind of where he falls short in terms of the debate. Some people say that his peak wasn't quite as high as guys like Taylor or Reggie White or even Aaron Donald. Still, he had eight first team all pros, three second team all pros, 11 Pro Bowls. He never won a ring and four Super Bowl chances, but really he doesn't get a lot of slander for that and deservedly so. Although it's ironic that he did score two points in the Bills first Super Bowl loss when he had a safety on Jeff Hostetler when Hostetler somehow didn't fumble the ball. Perhaps Perhaps if Smith had won a Super Bowl, he would be seen maybe in the same light. Who knows? But really, that's not how it goes for defensive linemen. This video is really all about splitting hairs. And if you had to split the tiniest of tiniest hairs, I would say that the lack of super dominant seasons compared to other guys. Never had a 20 sack season. Only had one season over 15 sack. The longevity consistency is there, but he doesn't have those couple super, super seasons like guys ahead of him on this list. And also, he kind of hung on for a little bit with Washington, where he was still good, but not not anywhere near as good as he was in his prime with the Bills. But then again, we're talking about one of the three or four best defensive players ever. So he gets this spot. Number three, Aaron Donald. I gotta admit, this was the toughest decision, obviously. The video is based around where I want to rank Donald. And I honestly, if you told me, I don't think that Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White are necessarily better players than Aaron Donald. But 
But, I mean, we're talking about the most microscopic of margins here. Aaron Donald was an absolutely unblockable player. He played 10 seasons. He won a sack title. Three Defensive Player of the Years. Was eight-time All-Pro. First team. Made 10 Pro Bowls every year of his career. He won a championship. Could have possibly won Super Bowl MVP as well in 2021. Like everybody on this list, he had to be double teamed or even triple teamed at all times in order for the opposing offense to have a chance. If you left him alone, you were done for. The thing with Donald is, and this is why this entire video is kind of an unfair comparison. It's, not, it's apples to oranges. Donald played his entire career in the PFF era where we're tracking everything. Guys like Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White, it's kind of more like word of mouth. If you listen to the people in the old heads, they say that, oh, Lawrence Taylor, it sounds like, like Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White averaged like five sacks a game and they never got blocked and never had any bad plays. And that's not really the case. In fact, Lawrence Taylor only led the league in sacks one year which was surprising to me. Reggie White led the league in sacks twice, but, but specifically with Taylor, you would think that he led the league in sacks and had over 300 sacks. And I know sacks aren't the end-all be-all, but it's the one stat that we have across all eras that's been recorded. I really, really wish that these guys all played in the same era so we could get a much more straightforward comparison. But Donald, by far, best of his era, no question about it. Again, J.J. Watt could have been in this discussion had he not had injuries. And I think Donald was just a little bit more consistent consistent in the postseason than Watt was, and in general, so I think either way, Donald was better. Also, the fact that Donald, his sack numbers, and I know this is partly due to the fact that he was a three technique and had his hand on the ground more. Had he played defensive end more often, I'm sure his sack numbers might have been higher, but I don't know if he would have been as impactful. We don't know. I think we're at the point in these rankings where if you want to say Aaron Donald's the best defensive player of all time, I really don't know how I could argue with you. If you had five Aaron Donalds along your defensive line, you would get a sack or a pressure on every single play. The guy was never not dominant. The only year you could say he wasn't dominant was 2022 when he got hurt and missed some games, but that was more because of injury instead of him. Right from the get-go, he was one of the best players in the league, and he was one of the best players in the league when he left. I just wish that he had a little bit more of a higher sack total, and that in the end, and this sounds, but again, when you're splitting hairs like this, and I'm taking position into account, I feel like his lack of longevity, just a tiny bit, is is what puts him third but at this point i don't i if you want to put him second or first i would not disagree with you at all number two lawrence taylor now i know a lot of people who again as i alluded to earlier in the video people lawrence taylor i'm not going to say he's overrated because he legitimately is one of and deserves to be in the conversation for the best defensive player and the best player ever but when you get old heads talking about lawrence taylor it's literally as if the guy never had a bad play and it, they talk about him as if he had five seconds a game and that he never had a bad game and it's just kind of like oh no one's an LT's class and I understand that you look at his career he led the league in sacks once in 86 when he won MVP he's the only player in this video to have won MVP now in my in context 86 was a really bad down year for quarterbacks the best quarterback was Dan Marino that year and he was on an 8-8 eight and eight team but Lawrence Taylor three defensive player of the year awards much like with Donald 142 sacks the thing with Taylor is is that he from 81 to 90 so his first 10 seasons which is really the same amount of seasons that Donald played he was really just the best and then his last three years were just meh so in a way if you look at Aaron Donald's career and you cut off Lawrence Taylor's career after 1990 they're basically the same thing if Donald managed to hang on for a couple more years and add to his sacks total he'd probably have his career would look more like Lawrence Taylor my other thing with Taylor and the reason why he might not be number one is the fact that was he the best or was he the first and by that i mean he was playing a position like of a hybrid outside linebacker where he was rushing the passer and i think he benefited a little bit from that where teams hadn't seen somebody like that where you had an outside linebacker running and blitzing could he also could he play three technique i don't know probably i mean i'm just saying i'm just kind of ranting off the top of my head this is just all ad-libbing you look at these highlights it's obvious the guy had an incredible amount of speed and power and he was on speed he was doing like lines and snorting coke and banging hookers and he was doing this and all of his teammates always talked about how he didn't even work out really it just was all natural this guy was just really a freak of nature uh but yeah, I, I will say i give him the second spot i'm not as enamored with him as well not enamored but i don't worship at the altar of lawrence taylor as if i feel like oh he was a perfect player and never made any mistakes but i would say that a large part of his hype and the praise that he gets is warranted but i do think it goes 
goes a little bit overboard sometimes as if he got a sack on every single play and that people gatekeep him a little bit too hard and finally number one reggie white now lawrence taylor wasn't a good guy and reggie white wasn't a great guy either he had his flaws put it nicely but i guess to me when i was looking at this i guess if you want to talk about who had peak longevity consistency aesthetically i mean i feel like reggie white has the best combination of all of those things he had just two fewer sacks than bruce smith in 67 fewer games he won two sack titles he was an eight-time first team all pro one defensive player of the year twice five-time second team all pro he has the most all pro selections of any player in this list he made 13 pro bowls which is also the most he won a ring and he had three sacks in his super bowl victory his hump move which where he would literally throw grown men like they were nothing is the stuff of legend he had 21 sacks in a 12 game 1987 season so who knows but i mean the consistency the longevity the total stats are there the peak is there the watchability factor was there and i know that really shouldn't matter but let's be honest it does when you're watching a defensive lineman he just manhandled people he just made other people look silly like they were scared of him and lawrence taylor obviously and all everybody on this list defenses were scared of and they accounted for but reggie white i mean he to me he's the only guy and taylor did this sometimes and donald did too but reggie white more than anybody else just made guys look bad and he would just do it while being triple and single while being triple and double teams and all this stuff and you can say i'm being biased because he was a philadelphia eagle for the majority of his career even though ironically he might be better known as a green bay packer because that's where he won a super bowl but i mean for him to win defensive player of the year 12 years apart a lot of these guys they win their defensive player of the years in a very concentrated part of their careers when they're in their prime reggie white was just unstoppable all the time i mean it was incredible and so to me i feel like of all the boxes of all you're looking at longevity peak combination whatever i feel like put it another way i feel like reggie white has the fewest holes in his argument to be the best defense player of all time because his peak was there his longevity was there he had the watchability factor i think everything combined other guys had the peak not the longevity some guys had the longevity not the same peak to me reggie white encapsulates all of it and that's why he's my number one and that will do it for this video thanks so much for watching if you haven't yet please subscribe i appreciate all of you have a great day